show. How are you, man? Well, thank you. I'm doing well. Awesome. Well, the uh, End Machine Quantum Phase just came out on March 8th. I've been checking that out for the past couple weeks. It's a great album. What do you think well, about thank it? You. <laughs> do you like it? Well, of course I do. Uh, I'm actually very excited about it. I mean, I think it's uh, I think it's our best album yet, and I'm I'm just uh, I mean, George is playing incredible, and Garish is singing and writing at a very very high level and to me the album is a real complete package and i'm very happy and passionate about it yeah i agree man it's definitely the best out of the ones that you've done so far and uh to me i don't know if this is just in my own head or this is actually something that happened but i feel like there's a lot more like docking vibes and and lynch mob vibes it was that intentional did that just happen because you know you guys are the guys that did that stuff or how did that play out but what it was is, you know, when when it did sort of sound dockney, we didn't like police ourselves and tell us tell ourselves, oh, we can't do that. We just let it happen. Um, we knew that Garish, who was brought up on that music, loves it, and we knew it would fit well with him. And indeed, it worked because he came through writing in flying colors. Great about this album, and it, it, it seemed in the eighties that you know all the heavy hitter songs were toward the beginning, and and, and you had good songs toward the end, but that's when the album really hits you in the face. This album seems like it's real strong all the way throughout, man. I got toward the end, and I'm thinking of songs like Shattered Glass Heart. I'm like, it's like my favorite song on the album. And it's really the last few tracks are like so strong. So pretty impressed by that, man. Because like I said, when I think of some of the old 80s albums, it, di it didn't always work that way. Right. Well, thank you. That was That's kind of my feeling about it as well. And Shattered Glass Heart is one of my favorites, too. So good. <laughs> we're, we're doing something right.
Well, uh, Foreigner, man. We got to mention Foreigner here because uh, you're out on tour with them. Is this the last mm -hmm. tour or what, what's going on with, with touring with Foreigner? This is the last year where we're going to do nine months of the year touring. So that's why we're calling it the Farewell Tour. We will probably do some dates in 2025, but there'll be far fewer, more select, maybe some casinos, some corporate gigs. Sure. Um, but we're going to slow it way, way, way down. Um, and uh, as far as live shows go. So like I say, that's why we're calling it the Farewell Tour. Uh, but we've got two Vegas residencies this year. There's a lot of really exciting stuff. We got the tour with Sticks and John Waite. So lots of great stuff. We're going to do a tour with Loverboy in the fall. So lots of exciting stuff coming. And Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Let's hope. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Keep voting. Tell everybody to vote every single day. Because all of a sudden we're hearing that, uh, who is it? Oh, Dave Matthews is, is beating us out. So let's let's beat Dave Matthews. <laughs> Unacceptable. Even even Paul McCartney was, was hyped up about this whole thing. <laughs> exactly. When Sir Paul mentions it, you know you're on the right track. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. I got to ask you about this one. Okay. Kelly Hansen. All right. All us 80s guys know him from Hurricane. You're a man that does a lot of different projects. You think you could ever pull him in to do a project uh, that's of the, the 80s vibe or no? He has zero desire. Post Foreigner, I think he'd like to maybe do something a little more R&B-ish perhaps. Okay. Uh, but that's a ways away. And while he's in Foreigner, no, he doesn't want to do outside projects. I thought the album Can't Slow Down was pretty great. I would love to see one more Foreigner album because yeah. that's, a, that's a great album. And there are some songs kicking around that I would love to see finished. And because we'll have a little more time in 2025, maybe that can happen. That's kind of a goal, certainly of mine. Um, but uh, it's all about time. So we'll, we'll see what the timing looks like. So, 
Uh, George was, you know, I just asked him, I said, you know, what era do you gravitate to, to uh, of the band? And he kind of said, you know, I feel like we were really on fire about tooth and nail under lock and key. And then we kind of ran out of steam, you know, by back for the attack. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Because I feel like a lot of people that I talk to, they love back for the attack. But what are your thoughts on uh, all that stuff? Well, you know, I, I do agree with him to a certain degree because I think back for the attack could have been a stronger record had we been more together. But we were very separated by then. Um, a lot of bad feelings going around. Um, and it was like separate camps. And that, that's not healthy. I mean, there was always, pro you know, there was always arguments and things. But, but on, on, on Tooth and Nail and Under Lock and Key, we did feel more like a unit, I think. And that was broken up a bit in Back for the Attack. I mean, I think Back for the Attack did come out well. Uh, but I, I believe it actually could have been stronger had we been more together.
I thought Dysfunctional was great. I mean, you got to the 90s, you guys got back together. I guess one album that's a strange one, and I don't know if many people ask you about it, is uh, Shadow Life. Shadow Life. <laughs> Shadow Life, yeah. yeah. What, so here's, let me hit you with a couple things. What was going on with the direction of Shadow Life? And talk a little bit about CMC Records, because I think that's a topic that doesn't get mentioned enough. It was a home for bands from the 80s. So thoughts on Shadow Life right. and CMC. What, what do you think? Well, you know, Shadow Life, again, was a situation where we were very separate and very, you know, th- there was a lot of, miscommunication within the band i mean we started off when we started off writing the record george and mick and i were in phoenix for several months and we had some great music that we were coming up with and there was some great stuff and even some finished songs um and then the direction kind of changed um and you know i think kelly gray gets a lot of flack about the record some of it is unfair because he was stuck in a very un very not good position being in the middle of everything um but you know he he was not a a classic doc and fan he kind of was brought in to sort of help bring us into the 90s a bit Mm -hmm. which in theory made sense but but then when you take out too much of the doc and and it wasn't all him doing it by the way but but when you take out too much of the doc and then we're not docking anymore so that's kind of what happened to shadow life we we deviated too far away from what we were um and it was it was somewhat of a painful album to me. who you went on to play with again, uh, Black Swan. So uh, yeah. good memories yeah. of, of that album, the Erase the Slate. I have great memories of that record. Yeah, and that's where I forged a really great, strong writing collaboration partnership with Reb that we, like you say, you know, he's going to be coming out again in a few weeks. Um, it was, yeah, I mean, I love writing with Reb. And and um, Don was still very in it, on his game in the, at that point and, and came up with some great stuff himself. So... Yeah, it was it became a strong album because once again we had focus and direction.
one album I've been kicking around a lot lately because uh, I work from home and sometimes in the morning you just want a more of a chilled out album to listen to. One Night Live, I think that's a great, uh, just great oh, thank uh, you. versions of the songs. And it's cool because like you sing, Mick sings. The only person I felt yeah. that kind of cheated was uh, George because he played electric on a lot of the tracks. But no, it's cool. But what he did musically was really cool. Oh, totally, so. totally. Yeah, um, yeah, I I understand that, but I loved that record. I loved making that record. Win Davis uh, engineered that record, and that was I love working with Win. So it was it was just a great thing all the way around.
people ask you about it a lot, but it's an album that means a lot to me, is uh, Dio, Strange Highways. You, you found yourself in Dio, and to me, like it's kind of a timeless album. Like You can go back and listen to it. it. It sounds perfect. It doesn't sound really dated. It doesn't sound like he's trying to be something that he's not. Uh, talk about Strange Highways a little bit, man, because like I said, I think that's killer stuff. Well, thank you. I mean, yeah, you know what's funny is over the years, people have come to appreciate that album much more. Um, and it's, it's aged very well, like you say. Um, and that was a magical songwriting process for that record. I, that's why I was disappointed it didn't do better at the time. I mean, I guess a lot of people thought it was undeal like, but now over, now they think it is. So, you know, it was, it was well, maybe we hit on something fresh is what I think happened. And again, it was magical. The, the writing was magical on that record. We would go in and play, and Ronnie would listen, and then he'd take a tape home, and then he'd come back the next day and say, okay, I've got this vocal idea, and let's try this. And then we, we would, I mean, it was just so on fire. Everybody was just, it, it was so connected. We were all so connected and focused. It was a great period. Um, so I love that record. If you want something interesting to see, there's a, Somewhere out there, there's a, a live show from the Hammersmith Odeon, I believe at the end of 93. And um, I saw that not too long ago, and I was blown away. The band was on fire. It was it really a strong, strong live band. And that, vi that video is really worth seeing. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I have seen that, obviously, being a big fan of all that stuff. What about uh, Tracy G? Because I feel like Tracy G, I, I, he's been on the podcast. He's a guy that kind of got a raw deal or the deal, like traditional deal fans weren't really feeling what he was doing. But he's another one, man. You go back and you listen to that guitar work, it's heavy, it's weird, it's just, it fits, you know? I, I love it. No, I, I, I think Tracy's brilliant. I always have. I felt it at the time. I, I did see where deal fans didn't see it as being, you know, he wasn't the kind of shredder that a Craig Goldie was um, or a Vivian Campbell. But, but man, he did something really unique and cool. And, yeah, over time I think people have come to appreciate it more because, yeah, Tracy got a really bad rap that he didn't deserve. <laughs> he really didn't. He, and he was a, an integral part of the whole thing. I mean, his, he was, his energy was really important to the making of that record. So I love Tracy G. I you know, I'm I'm glad that people are becoming more accepting and understanding of what he did because, yeah, I think it threw people at the time. But man, it's aged really well, and it's it was it was very inspired. Tracy is a very inspired player. Favorite song on there? Probably "Strange Highways." If I had a favorite, but um, God, there's a bunch of cool ones. "Blood from a Stone." Yeah. Um. I thought that was a great one. Or was that on? No, the that's next right. That, yeah, Blood from a Stone, Bring Down the Rain, yep, One Foot in the Grave. Those Bring Down the Rain, you know, I love that song, yeah. yeah.
And you know, you're a great writer. You've written with all kinds of people. You produce all kinds of people. What's next? Is there somebody out there that you want to work with that you have? What, what's coming up for you, man? Well, what's coming up is Rev Beach is going to be uh, coming here again soon. And we'll finish up writing the music for Black Swan. We're already collaborating with Robin on Rev was here uh, several weeks ago. And we, we came, we got seven songs deep into the next Black Swan record. Um, and Robin's been writing lyrics and we've been working back and forth on that. And uh, it's going to be a great record. Uh, so like I say, Rev's coming out again. I don't anticipate that record coming out till 2025 um, sometime. Um, but because uh, we're going to take our time and make sure it's done right. Um, but I'm very excited about it. And I love working with Rev, so it's going to be great.
does the well ever run dry? Because it seems like you just keep going and going and going. Where do the ideas all come from? I don't know. I just, I love music. And, and I think what happens is when you have good chemistry with people, when you get together, um, you know, two heads are better than one and something happens. There's a, there's a mysterious element in there that happens and that's the beauty of what we do. And um, so I don't question it. <laughs> <laughs> just accept it. Well, Jeff, man, I appreciate all the great music and, and taking time to talk with me today, man. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. I'm glad we got to do this. Yeah.